Hey, everybody. When talking to businesses about AI and machine learning, the biggest question that I often get asked is, how do I actually use machine learning in my real world, real practice, everyday environment? And in this video, I'm going to break that down for you very simplistically. In this example, we'll assume that I'm a worker for a manufacturing and or distribution company, which happens to be an area that I know a lot about, which is why I choose this specific industry, uh, because I can walk through this very easily. And so within this off the top, it's important to remember that your machine learning algorithms can do two things. I look at machine learning algorithms as Legos for solving problems. And these Legos can solve one of two types of problems. It can predict things and it can classify things. And that's it. Predictions and classifiers. And all of your algorithms that will uh, you can explore and that we're going to explore today fall under this. They're either a prediction algorithm or a classification algorithm. And so the very first algorithm that we're going to explore in this instance is a PSO swarm or particle swarm optimization, which is a swarm algorithm. Uh, and then in this instance, swarm algorithms are optimization uh, uh, algorithms. So in this instance, they look to predict. And then in this instance, we have workers and machines, and we have a productivity that we've defined. And we define our productivity as a thousand in this instance. And then we have our cost for our workers and our cost for our machines. And then we have a penalty that we can fill in here. Uh, right now, the penalty is set to zero, but we can adjust all of these parameters. And then so essentially we have a search space that we've created. And then what we want to know in this instance is what is the optimal amount of workers that we should have and the optimal amount of machines that we should have. We want to make sure that we can fulfill all orders and that all orders get complete, but we don't want too many workers and we don't want too many machines. We want that, that perfect medium. And then so we can see here, this algorithm stops here. I've run it like 50 times. It always stops here uh, for uh, 75 workers and for 50 machines. And then in this instance, I've coded just a really simple visualization. Uh, so, you know, for uh, anyone looking at this, upper management, executives, things like this, they get really simple and really cool visualization. And like, so to me, this is the bottom line aspect of uh, for the very first aspect of why you would use machine learning in these instances is I can do very complex things with machine learning uh, and visualize them very easily all for free <laughs> as opposed to uh, enterprise software which would cost significant amounts of money to do this exact same thing and then so it's just a matter of being able to utilize math and understanding math to do work for free is <laughs> uh, how I look at it. Uh, and then, so I also give you a simple breakdown as to exactly what this algorithm is doing in this particular instance. So this to exactly what is going on here. First of all, we have an objective function, uh, which is the manufacturing cost. And then that's what our, uh, everything is related to cost in this instance, right? And then, so this function calculates the total cost based on the number of workers and the number of machines. And it includes labor, machines, and the penalty uh, for production if the production rate is lower than the target production. Then we uh, use our PSO swarm optimization. The algorithm goes through. And essentially, each uh, individual PSO swarm is an agent. So we have like a 1,000 agents. And they go through. And they're essentially like simulating uh, all of this and then simulating the results. And then we take the very best results of the simulation. And then we visualize that. So very straightforward. So this next one is uh, also a, it's a probability, so prediction algorithm, uh, which is a Monte Carlo, and this is a Monte Carlo uh, simulation. And then so Monte Carlo, uh, if you're familiar with like Monte Carlo casinos, this uh, algorithm was initially created for casinos, <laughs> but it, it's a simulation algorithm and it simulates probability and it simulates probability very well. Um, and then so we can do more than just card games, right? We can throw in, well, uh, any scenario into our simulation, and then we can use Monte Carlo algorithms to simulate it. And then so in this particular instance, we're simulating a very common situation that I, I have seen personally a lot within uh, 
manufacturing and especially within distribution. So this is assuming that you're a distribution company buying from a manufacturer. Uh, and then in this instance, you buy from the manufacturer and then your products have a four week lead time from the manufacturer. If you buy it today, it will take you four weeks to get it and it's gonna cost you $25,000. So if you buy it today, and you have $25,000 out there floating for four weeks, which you don't want. Right? And then so uh, we, in this instance, we have uh, parameters of our max shelf time and our max wait time. And then so, and then we can adjust all of this, right? And then so in this instance, we are prioritizing, uh, we don't want products sitting on the shelf. We don't want our $25,000 sitting out there. And then we're willing to have our customers wait up to 21 days in this instance. We want them to generally wait about two weeks. Uh, so we give them uh, some sort of lead time, right? It would be better than the four weeks that they would get directly from the manufacturer, but we don't have product sitting. In this instance, uh, our product sits for a maximum of like 1.5 days, <laughs> which is phenomenal for our business in this instance, right? And then again, we can adjust this up or down, uh, and then we can adjust this in any way that we like. Uh, and then so we run our simulations, and then in this instance, our Monte Carlo algorithm them runs the simulation for a thousand instances uh, and then in this thousand instances it breaks down all of the simulations and all the probabilities that come out of that and that's what we get and then so uh, these key steps are the key steps of the simulation and it's essentially going through it's simulating uh, 365 days so one full year if inventory runs out that's very bad we don't want that uh, and then we don't want uh, inventory on the shelf. So inventory running out and inventory waiting for more than 1.5 days are, is very bad. And then that's kind of where this comes in and how we utilize this. And then, so this last one is a uh, classification algorithm. And then, so in this instance, we're using a random forest classifier. And then there are many different classifier algorithms that we could use, naive Bayes, uh, random forest, uh, et cetera. Uh, and then so in this instance, we're just using random forest and then we're creating a, a generic data set. We're creating a synthetic data set on our own. And then we are classifying widgets. We are classifying widgets into uh, essentially two categories into uh, either uh, uh, that they work or they don't <laughs> is, is our goal, uh, right? Uh, and then so uh, within that, how we do that, and we also have different um, classifiers for the uh, widgets, such as weight, size feature, and color. And then based off of these, we can use those to determine if there's a correlation, say, and we can see in this in example that there's a strong correlation between weight and effectiveness, uh, and then also size and effectiveness, and then color and effectiveness, uh, no correlation is what we get out of this, which would be expected, right? And so uh, these are. this is essentially what breaks up out of that. And then we get our visualization. And then so in this instance, what we can see is that all three of these algorithms are performing very different functions, right? This is performing a very different function and different output than this compared to this. So our different Legos do different things, right? These are different Legos for different scenarios. And so uh, why would you use an individual machine learning algorithm in an individual instance? because you have an individual problem to solve. Uh, and then this is an individual challenge. And then so, uh, and then I guess, why not throw just like ChatGPT at these things? Because ChatGPT isn't a naive base classifier. It isn't a random forest classifier. It isn't a Monte Carlo algorithm. Right. Uh, it, it can do some of these things and can do a lot of these things, but it's not specialized in these things. And then so you want that special Lego, <laughs> that specialized Lego, and you want that Lego to be narrowed down and specific for the job that you're doing. Uh, oftentimes, like a, as an example, let's say that you're running ChatGPT, and then let's say uh, you go through these instances and you run this and you do this multiple times of running ChatGPT is not cheap, but right? it could run you $40, $50 to get your final result out of it by the time that it's all said and done. And you don't see that result until the bill comes, right? But it's 40 to $50 as opposed to just spending a few minutes here in uh, Colab or on in Python, and then you get a free result. And so I'd rather do it for free. And so if you like this stuff content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.